In this video, we're going to explain the max ECU closed loop setup and what some of the parameters actually mean. So in this first screenshot, we've got um, how to set up the actual Lambda sensor. Obviously, most of you will be running the internal wideband sensor, uh, single sensor. The box, the ECU, Race, Street, Pro, all of the ECUs ship with an LSU 4.2. It can use a 4.9. Uh, the default is 4.2. Um, this setting is allows you to turn the heater of the wideband on when the ECU turns on or only when the engine starts up. This saves the battery when you're in the pits and you're playing around with the ECU. You go to start the car or the motorcycle and you forget the setting and your battery's dead. So during initial setup, I, I recommend you have it during ECU startup, but once you get everything set up, I would re recommend that be changed to engine startup. The calibration mode, when you're using a, a new brand new sensor, default automatic calibration works really well. When the sensor gets a mage on it, you wanna set it out in free air on a sunny day uh, with no cold front, no, no high pressure fronts, no low pressure fronts, with a very high barometric pressure reading and calibrate the sensor. Because the reason you do this is oxygen sensors are very pressure, pressure sensitive. So if you do this during a rainstorm, then the calibration will be off a little bit. We're not talking one or two air fuel points. It'll just, it changes the calibration slightly and it skews your reading. So do this on a sunny, bright day when the barometric pressure is as close to normal as possible. All right, so now we go to the actual Lambda control. We enable it. So what are these settings? What does this mean? So this is when the conditions for the closed loop will, will be active. Um, so PPS delta, what does that mean? That means how fast are you opening and closing the throttle? So a high number means you're really opening the throttle very fast. That throttle percent per cycle. Same thing for this reading. This means how fast is the manifold pressure changing? You don't want the closed loop changing things during transient. There are other settings in the ECU to handle that. So you want the closed loop to actually turn off during those conditions. And that's what these settings are for. You can data log these settings and you can see when these settings are actually affecting closed loop operation. Minimum coolant temp, that's self-explanatory. Uh, at what temperature do you actually want the closed loop to start working? There are tables for air temp and coolant temp during the during the warm-up cycle and you most people don't want the closed loop to affect the warm-up tune-up they put in the in the engine how long after you start the engine before closed loop kicks in that's what this timer settings for and if any of these conditions are violated and the closed loop turns off how long do you want it to wait before it actually turns back on again and that's what this setting is for moving on to controller frequency this is how many times per second, actually engine cycles per second, does the ECU sample the data from the wideband? So at idle, you don't need to sample the wideband as frequently. So those settings are generally low. And as you increase in, in the engine RPMs, you want to sample it more frequently because there are more engine cycles, more combustion events happening during high revs. So that's what these are for. So. You could put 15 in there, and then you could change this to, you know, 13,000 RPM. Regulator gain. This is the amount of correction the ECU applies based on what it's calculated. So if the ECU is calculated that it needs to change the next pulse width 10%, this is how much of that 10% it's actually going to change. So in this case, it's only going to do 20% of 10%, so 2%. And the reason the setting is here is the smaller you make changes, the, the more smooth the air fuel line will be. So if you put 200 in here, that means if it calculates it needs to add 2 milliseconds of fuel, it's actually going to add 4 milliseconds of fuel. That change may be too much, and then on the next cycle, it's going to be taking away 200% of whatever it calculates. So this is how much of the correction do you want it to apply? 
100% would be all of it. 50% would be half of it. I recommend 20 to 50% in most applications. On a chassis dyno, some cars and some motorcycles accelerate too fast for the closed loop to actually do its proper job. So the data log and the, and the latency of the sensor itself aren't going to show you accurate data. Then these are going to be your minimum and maximum correction settings. I recommend just a, you know the same settings everywhere in this table. So you know if you have uh, you know, 20 percent in one, you should have 20 percent in the other one. I just do that symmetrically, uh, and then you can narrow these settings down um, as you see the tune is getting better and better. 